Hey there everyone. Today we're replicating the dancing drop experiment. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Whoa. So the dancing droplet experiment is an experiment that was originally discovered by some Stanford researchers. Uh, there's a link to the paper in the doobly doo. It actually it ended up getting published in Nature. It's a really awesome, it's a really awesome experiment. These researchers were kind of enough to allow us into their lab and perform the experiment using the equipment that they themselves did, which is super cool. So for this experiment to work, what we're doing is we're mixing up solutions that have different concentrations of propylene glycol. For this, we're just using common food coloring because if you check on this on the box, you just need to make sure that that food coloring contains propylene glycol. And then, once we have our slides clean, we then set up our solution that has our different concentrations and we just set them on the slides. Wow, wow that's wild. <laughs> that's so cool. Now, those with higher concentrations, those solutions that have higher concentrations, actually will chase, if you will, the solutions with the lower concentrations and you can see see effects like this so this experiment uh, is actually a great example of artificial chemotaxis and so basically chemotaxis or take taxes and basically chemotaxis is used in living cells to move different solutions around and this was one of the first found examples of artificial chemotaxis and so it's very exciting and we got a chance to go to the lab where they did that original research and perform their experiments and replicate the results. And it was a really awesome experience. So in order for us to get such a pronounced effect, to be able to really see it, um, see it move in such a dynamic way, we need a very, very clean surface. And for that, not just anything will do. So we started by getting some microscope slides and um, they come clean, relatively clean from the factory. Um, but this wasn't enough. There's one method of with which to clean these slides, and that is with a Bunsen burner. So you set up the Bunsen burner to have a very blue flame, so you're trying to deposit as little soot as possible onto this, and then you want to burn off any, any kind of oils or anything that may be stuck to that slide. Um, that's what we're doing here in this clip, as you can see. But this method isn't ideal, because as clean as our flame is, it still deposits little microparticles of soot on our slide and really if we want it to perform very very well even those tiny mar micro particles will cause a problem for us so for that we actually had to turn to a new solution a new method of cleaning these slides they basically have a plasma taser cleaner and what what they've done is they've set up a high voltage power supply that uh arcs to the slides and what the, so so what we can do is we can just set the slides down Onto this, onto this cleaner, and then pass it, pass these slides through our high voltage plasma arcs. And what that does is that plasma then incinerates all of the oils and all of our contaminants that are on the slides, and gives it a really nice clean. So this is really awesome. Not only did we uh, perform this experiment, but this was my first time using a uh, high voltage plasma cleaning system, which is just super cool. I think that's, <laughs> that's something I've always wanted to do. You know, it's using high voltage in sort of a legitimate scientific way, and that's just always fun, um, rather than just shocking stuff, right? So today on Jam Labs, if you were watching, we reached out to um, these guys at Adrian in their lab and they were kind enough to bring us in and show us how to do the experiment and give us time and space to film the experiment that you just watched. And we learned that scientists aren't some distant figure. We can talk to them and we can share and we can learn and do really cool things. That was Jam Labs. Thanks for watching. Do you want to redo this? Yeah, I do. Yeah, let's redo this.